Hello brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode here on Dangerous African Confessions HD. In this episode, we have another confession from our brother. And in this this confession, he reveals to us what he saw when he had gone for money ritual. Something that they do every year. Without taking much of your time, let us go and listen to what our brother do have for us in this episode. Before we go on, if you're new here, please do us this favor and subscribe to the channel, and please do share and like our videos. Kindly hit the notification bell so you will be the first to get notification to our videos when we upload. Hello brother, I believe you are well today. I have something important that I want to reveal to you. And it is mostly about my life and then it connects with what I saw when I made a decision to seek spiritual help in making money. By God's grace I didn't go through with it though, but what I saw there is something that breaks my heart each and every time it comes to my mind. That day was the most painful and dark day of my entire life. I felt betrayed, lied to and was even sad for all the people that this kind of lies and betrayal was being told to. You see, things were very difficult for me. It was more like, there was some spirit that was making sure I would not have money. The thing is that, I had this bigger picture of me having money and then helping my community. That was the only thing I wanted to do when I eventually make money in my life. And I don't know if that is why things were so difficult for me or not. For this very reason, I tried my best to push myself through life in order to break the arms of poverty. But the more I tried, the more it became difficult for me. Throughout all this period of life, I was a member of a church that I do not want to mention the name. Our pastor is popular and goes about doing miracles and preaching good to people. And so, I had this belief that, one day it will get to my turn. And the Lord might one day use his servant to bless my life, or chase away every bad or evil spirit tormenting my life. I had that belief. But as months and years went by, I was beginning to realize that those things were never going to manifest in my life. But one thing I wondered was that, people do come to the church and they will receive their prophecies and they will come with testimonies. But what I didn't understand was why they would come from outside of the church and receive their prophecies and miracles. Whereas I will be in the church and the Lord will pass me by. These things kept on eating me up and ringing in my head for some time. At a point where I couldn't hold them again, I talked to a friend about it. Thinking that, he will have some sort of good advice for me. When I told him about my problems, he laughed at me but didn't say anything about what I had discussed with him. He brought in a different issue so that we would put aside what I had talked to him about. It was until about three days later that he called me into his workplace. When I was with him, he told me that he had his reasons for putting aside the issue I raised. But then, he didn't know how to go about it to me. And he wanted to find the right words before he can talk to me. Because he doesn't see me to be just a friend, but rather he see me as a brother. He continued by saying that, my pastor can never help me in any way. It was like that very day. He was bold and was never the cool gentle guy that I knew. He told me that, there are secrets in this life. For any successful person you see out there, they do have certain things that they do in order to get what they have or to protect it. He said, the road to making money and fame is not on a silver platter like people have made it to look like. He continued that, if you take the so-called religious or Christians who have money, about 90% of them do have a different source away from the church they go to. This point that he made, I made a huge argument with him. And even called out the names of people that I believe they are making it genuinely and it is from the power of the Most High. When I said these things to him, he looked at my face for some time and broke his silence by saying that it was that day that he has realized that I am very naive about life and human beings in general. He said, people comes to others preaching Christ and then go behind their closets and do other stuffs that go contrary to whatever that they preach about. So always people do sit in the churches thinking that, whatsoever they are having is from God that they are serving. But behind all that, they don't serve what you think you are serving with them. At that moment I felt like my friend was going overboard. And so, I told him I wanted to take my leave. He laughed at me when I said that. And he told me I can leave if that is what I wanted to do. But then, 
he said that he wanted to show me things before he can put me on and help me. So that, when he finally gives me that helping hand that I had always wanted, I will know what I was dealing with. You see, these things he said, I once again took it literally. But little did I know that he was really telling me things that he had coded them like that. So life went on, and still couldn't find anything meaningful for myself. So, I went back to him and told him that, whatever he wanted to reveal or to let me know, I was ready. He looked at me, and shook his head. He told me that, I think I am ready to do stuff. But the truth is that, I am not. But for him as a brother and a friend, he will let me in on things that he knows. Then, he will help me. He made a promise to me. He kept on pushing the date forward till I was even getting disappointed and almost giving up. That was when he told me that it was time for him to take me to a place to see his spiritual father and helper. I asked what he meant by a spiritual father and a helper. Because I knew him not to be a church person, to be saying those things. He laughed and told me that we Christians are not the only group of people that knows the secrets to the supernatural. But we go about letting it look like it is our duty to fight for a God that created the universe by himself. I was quiet listening to him. When after he had done talking, I told him I would go and see his spiritual father for him to also bless me. Don't judge me at this point. Because what I have been through, I am not sure what you would have done if you experienced part of it. The reason I decided to push those side out is that, that is not the focus of my revelation. If you will look carefully, I keep on saying things were not going on well for me. And I was this and that. That's all. I want to push a different message which I will not be the center figure. So please my brothers and sister, just bear with me for this one. So when I said that, he told me that he was even ready to take me to see things for myself and not just because I am saying I was ready to go. So, the time reached and we drove in his car to this big house. He called and said something on the phone. He said that, the son of the great provider, son number 1143. As soon as he finished saying that, the big gate opened for us to enter. So when we had entered and we were still in the car, I asked the meaning of what he had said. He said that, that is his code and number. He said everyone that comes there is given a number and a code, which is unique to only him. But the son of the great provider is something that they say to let them know that you are a member of them. Because their deity or energy is a provider for all his children. We went inside, and to my surprise, there were plenty of people in the big building. It is built just like how these big churches do pit out their structures. That is just how it was like. Honestly, it was beautiful. Even how the compound had been decorated was really nice and amazing. It was more like you are going to some diplomatic kind of meeting. Because the standards there was something different from what I have seen in churches. I was really amazed. Everyone was there congratulating and welcoming themselves. I never knew that it was the day for their annual meeting. That was the reason why my friend had waited till this day to bring me there. He said that, when after you have finished listening to the message of growth from other members, and you want to become a part of it, then he will be ready to push me into it without any stress at all for me. After everything, nothing seemed evil about what they were doing over there. And so, I told my friend that, I wanted to join them. He laughed and told me to relax and deeply think about it very well. So after that part of the service or whatever it was had been completed, he told me that, it was time for the me to witness some things for myself. So, he said that, I should behave just like any other person does. Either than that when they sense that I am new there, they will walk me out of the place where we were going. I then told him that, if that was the case, then there was no need for me to go there. He insisted I go with him to that end. So I followed him. When we got to the second auditorium, the decoration there was much more different from what was at the other side. This one was more of abstract symbols and geometry. Designs of cars and ships were all over the buildings. I didn't understand. I wanted to ask him but then, I remembered what he had told me earlier. When we got there and sat down, we sat down on the floor with our legs crossed. 
He then whispered in my ears that, one of the high-ranked members will come and renew his covenant. I should look at him carefully if I knew him. And to my utmost surprise, my pastor stood up and walked towards where they had the altar. He knelt before the person leading the rituals. This man now used a sword to touch the shoulders of my pastor, and then commanded him to go and do more wonders and miracles as has finished his ritual for the year. I whispered in my friend's ears what the ritual for the year was. And then, he said he will explain everything to me when we get out of the building. When he was done, a white dove was killed, and its blood was sprinkled on my pastor. And as they were sprinkling the blood on him, he kept on saying, You will not lack, as a faithful servant of the great provider. You shall surely go far. And all those things. After everything, he went inside a small room on my right hand side from where I was sitting. He came out wearing his black suit. Apparently, before it reaches your turn, you will go inside that room and change to an outfit they use for their rituals. Then, after you have completed your ritual, you will go back inside that room and changed. So, had it not been my friend, you will visit them and be in the main auditorium and think that everything they do over there is genuine and there is not evil about it. Which would maybe propel you to make a decision to join them. And before you will know it, you will be selling your souls to the devil. My friend after he had finished with his rituals, then asked me for order to hear him. He asked if I have finished with my yearly rituals. He then continued saying, get up and let's go to the outside to talk. That was how he managed to take me out of the place. When we got back to the main auditorium, he showed me people who are now going to announce that they will be a part of them. And my brother, they were young guys and ladies who were all among them. When we were back home, I asked him about the yearly rituals. And he told me that each and everyone has a ritual that he is commanded to perform on his own before they all will gather at the end of their calendar. And for him, he has his own thing that he does. Which he said is even different from what the person that introduced him into the cult also does. So he cannot pinpoint and tell me exactly what the ritual is. But what he said that this struck me was that, he said, mostly those that go there for powers to do miracles like the pastors, politicians, and doctors, they are always 90% will be a sacrifice of blood. Which he said always turns out to be human blood. He said even with them, if you want to go deeper, you will have to offer a human blood before you can break certain levels and attain whatever it is that you want. He said for him, he is okay at the level that he is and would not want to be too much of a greedy person to move any further. Because one thing he said was that, he might not know who the sacrifice will pick among his family members. That was why he doesn't want to push any further. And even with him who says he doesn't want to push more, the kind of money that he enjoys, it is too much. In about three days after we returned from the place, I had never been able to sleep. I was sad and couldn't do anything. My own pastor. Who comes and speaks as if he sits with God. He talks about how God told him this and that. What pained me most was he having laid his hands on me. Knowing very well where his source is. My friend called me and told me to find something that I want to do and let him know so that he can help me with the funding. So I am now setting up the office where I will be working. Because I do have knowledge in graphic designing, I want to have an advertising agency. He is happy about it and he is ready to push money for me to start the business. He told me that he could have given me the money without taking me through any stress of going to the place. But he wanted me to remain as he met me. He said what attracted him to me was the fact that he saw me to be someone who valued the little that he has. Because he knowing what people go through before they make it in life. He said that, when we meet and I talk about how much my pastor is good and all that, he felt bad about it and felt pity for me. And that is why he wanted me to know the person behind that veil he has put on his face. Now, I know better. Not to say I am no longer a Christian. But then, I know better now. So please do well to know hot for yourself, and not what someone tells you. Because you might not know the God that he or she might be talking about. Thank you for having me. Don't forget to please subscribe, share and like our videos. Kindly hit the notification bell so you will be the first to get notification to our videos when we upload. Like I always say, 
these are not just stories for story's sake. They are meant for us not to make these mistakes our brothers and sisters are making. That's why we share these stories with you. After listening to this story, I will say that, life indeed is something that no one can predict. And you can't even seem to understand what life is all about. I honestly wish the youth of these days would listen to some of the important lessons in these stories that we share. You see, I will say that, having ambitions in life is all good. And wanting to go the extra mile for the loved ones in our lives is also good. But always have it at the back of your mind that, you will not let that ambition destroy you making wrong decisions. The world indeed is heading to a place where morals are lost in our society. And the only thing that matters to us more is the love for money. Which almost always makes us make wrong decisions. Because when it happens that way, always the results, or the decisions that we take, most at times are flawed. And it goes a long way to turn and then come back to hurt us. When you have a dream or ambition, work towards it gradually, till you become master of your vision. I just hope that, we honestly take the important lessons from these stories, to better our lives and decisions. Stay blessed and be safe. Thanks for being a part of this growing family. Kindly share your thoughts with us in the comment section below. And if you are new here, please subscribe, like and share.